going live. We're unmuted. We're gonna talk about some stuff. Yeah. Wow. All right. Thank you so much, Colin. Oh. Hello, everybody. Welcome. I'm to done. The- See you later. I love it. Peace out. <laughs> Carol, it's your show. Uh, it'd be nice if uh, you know I get to actually have it be my show. They always talk over me. It's a running joke. So hi everyone. I'm Carol. Hey Welcome everyone. To- I'm back. I can't avoid the camera, and I got to talk over Carol. Kyle, shut the fuck up. Rip. See, I stand up for myself. So, <laughs> so I'll try this again. Hi, everyone. I'm Carol, and welcome to Between the Rolls, our Murder Hobo Week attempt. I'm not sure how good of an attempt, but an attempt at a talk show. Uh, as the usual, uh, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, um, check out our YouTube archive for everything that's uh, all our video, past videos that have dropped off of uh, Twitch. Um, did I say follow us on Twitch? Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, YouTube. Uh, of course, then we have a Discord channel. And finally, if you want to buy some really cool gamer stuff uh, and declare yourself a murder hobo, there's, of course, there's our uh, Murder Hobo Inc. t-shirt shop. Or you can buy a duvet or whatever. Kyle, I, I can see you, Oh, Kyle. COVID masks. You can get uh, Murder Hobo COVID masks. Get COVID mask. That's right. And of course, I want to thank our two sponsors. Actually, you know, maybe you should have Kyle thank our sponsors because he's so good at it. Of course, and if you're you muted. Freaking muted. You're muted. Oh, yeah, you're doing it on purpose because you're just being an asshole. So <laughs> I'm trying yourself. not to talk over you, Carol. It's so hard. It's tempting. <laughs> Why don't you go over our sponsors since you do it so well? Or not. Fine, I'll do it. I watch them. Hi, all right, so I want to thank our sponsors. Carol, we're not in person. You actually have to say the person's name that you want to do the thing. Otherwise, if you just Kyle. point and be like you. you. <laughs> Kyle, I said you do it so well, Kyle. So why don't you introduce our sponsors? Oh, fuck I'm you. I'm prepared for this. <laughs> All right, so our spot, thanks to our sponsors for the third time. Apparently, third time is going to be a charm tonight. Uh, so first of all, we have Offitch Games, makers of Adventure Sense. Uh, if you want your your basement dungeon to smell like the real thing, there you go. Also, they make uh, they have a cookbook, and I'm trying to remember what else they have. They have, I think, they have games. They had how to they ran games at Gen Con about how to how play. To- RPG with your cat. RPG, mm-hmm. that's it. I was gonna say how to uh, and I think the- they're doing a Kickstarter for uh, uh, um, storytelling, story writing, you know, kind of writing your own backstories with a yeah. little deck of cards called Shine, but I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. And the cookbook is The Acid Test. Where yes, you have which to is cook. an actual game. It is, yeah, you, too. You have to roll dice when you cook, right? I always roll dice when I cook. <laughs> Every like, time, uh, Kyle do I cooks. add paprika? Every time, <laughs> yes. George. Every time, ty- uh, Kyle cooks, it's a roll of the dice. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we've seen what he eats. So, oh, we get, we get, hi. We can all say hi to him. Um, no, he's too old. Don't sponsor, say hi to him. Of course. Cover up I- your tattoo. He's not allowed to look at those things. <laughs> Our other sponsor, of course, is Pirate Dog Dice. Not what Kyle usually calls them. Dirty Dog Dice? No. Yeah, Pir- no, you're right. It is Pirate Dog Dice. I I have very difficulty remembering that. Because I have what? to remember the uh, the uh, the slogan that goes with uh, Pirate Dog Dice, which is... And what is that? Uh, it's their dog turd dice, proof that you can <laughs> polish a turd. You know, Miss but we we went over this. Mythbusters did proof you could polish a turd. I think they just <laughs> polished a pile of mud, though. I don't no. think they actually used feces. No, I'm pretty sure I believe they did. Mm. But um, it's good for the pores on the skin. Their hands were delicate for years afterwards. It's true, Caitlin. Don't give me that look. <laughs> <laughs> 
God. Hey. She's like, hey. what did I do? <laughs> I know. You came on between the rolls. With Kyle. <coughs> Wait, Sorry. you guys don't do this when I'm not here? I feel like I haven't seen Kyle in like months. Yeah, I don't want you to scare me off with your murder hoboiness. It terrifies me. <laughs> Okay, we found that Caitlin might be the most murder hobo one of all. So actually with that, I'm going to go to introductions and we'll start with Caitlin. Caitlin, go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, say a little bit about your your gaming or whatever you'd like to say. So go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Hi, Come on, Caitlin. Caitlin. <laughs> Generally, you let someone else do it and then Caitlin has an idea of what she's supposed to say. Nah, oh. we're going with it. I'm Caitlin. I've been playing. I've been playing with you guys for... I don't know, over six months now. We're, we're mm -hmm. getting close to a year, I feel like. I'm really Ugh. bad at time. I we're going to have to have that yearly talk then. <laughs> it may be at a year soon. I don't know, like, because COVID's thrown me off. I've been playing in the Thursday game, which has been nice lately because it's more of a campaign setting than one shot. So good to know that I understand the backstory of where we're going. And as always, I typically play a tiefling, and I'm not terribly murderous stress occasionally there's a bystander that gets in my <laughs> every episode folks every episode did that chicken look at me funny burn wasn't the first episode didn't you come out and kill like four innocent people or something like that oh her very first episode <laughs> yeah yeah right off the bat we saved them and then we into burned the game. Them. <laughs> and by the way, that was a good job. All right. I, I totally forgot you've never actually been on this, but you have been on the other shows. So usually you introduce yourself. So it's not like she's a total newbie. <laughs> yeah. And then we're going over our signs, and I'm a Virgo, and my birthday's almost here. Yeah. Nice. Reading comments. All right, David, you're next. Okay, I'm David, and uh, I've been showing up here on Between the Rules for a while. I am also on the Thursday night show, Cacophony, and sometimes on the one shots on Saturday. So, play some interesting characters. My latest is Zadar in Cacophony, uh, Changeling, non binary, <coughs> uh, arcane rogue. So, anyway. That's me in a nutshell, folks. Also right, but very low. All right, Kyle. Hi. Last but not least, you. Go ahead. Thank you. I appreciate that because I am the best of all of us. <laughs> <sighs> uh, hi, I'm Kyle. Uh, very often player, the second most DME guy uh, on the Murder Hobo, and I am the original murder hobo after the other original murder hobos. You weren't and there, Carol, at the beginning. No, I was not. No. Killing I people was. with shotguns, hopping on trains, rolling dice for the lulz. That's L-U-L-Z, in case you were wondering how that was spelled. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't have much else to add to that. I've been busy... Well, uh, writing and doing a terrible job of it so no more one shots from me for a little while oh, oh come on I get feeling um yeah i said you know what the right thing is yeah I, I may not be the oldest the longest murder hobo but i'm i think oldest. david i don't think david's i don't think you have played as long. i've played i've played for about 30 years so I'm I'm probably the I'm the oldest murder hobo on this uh, in this group. Uh, <laughs> the laugh but, lines tell us all the truth. Yeah, you know, but no, no laugh but, lines. Those are good the, things, right? The You're not supposed to tell her they're wrinkles. They're laugh lines. That's right. <laughs> no, How about the, the one gray hair. You know, so just, uh, so just one. just one, or maybe mm -hmm. like. Oh wait, yeah, I have papers tonight. So, of course, I to have the list on my phone tonight because I didn't realize I was going to be hosting until like 10 up. You know so, what? No one did. So, no, no one did. He didn't pick. 
So, uh, so let's get to the games now. Thursday night, unfortunately, it had to be a rerun uh, due to Frank getting smoshed at work, apparently. So, the first game we had this week would be the campaign. So, Kyle, why don't you give the highlights of the campaign? Because, I, as I said, I feel like you are the appropriate person for this this week. That is a never a good thing because I don't remember anything that's happened. <laughs> so, uh, with the campaign, uh, we find ourselves in the catacombs of Yaddle because Yaddle is now under invasion, as far as we know, by both dragons, boulders, catapults, and... Uh, a cult of Sensua finally on the rise. Uh, uh, on our descent into the catacombs, uh, what we were looking for the second piece of a staff of catching. Pokemon. Oh, catching. <laughs> yes, I love it. The staff of Ash, catch them. <laughs> oh my God. That's right. Uh, we finally changed the name of the artifact. Deal with it, Frank. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, but during our search down there, we ran across uh, uh, one Alvin Knackle, a gnome who is the father figure to our favorite gnome, lie barbarian, Dewey Docamel. I was, no. I was, yeah, I was like, whoa. No. I was sad. I, I you know what? I was really bummed. I was just hiding it under laughter and smiles all night. I was really sad trying to keep the tears in. Anyway, uh, but while we were down there, we're encountering the cult of Sensua. Uh, we encountered Dewey's uh, uh, long lost uh, father figure uh, and inside his tomb, after two of the party members tried to hide it from Dewey, we <laughs> find the hint of where the staff of Ash Ketchum might be hid further in the catacombs. <laughs> Uh, while Dewey was crying uh, like a little baby, uh, the rest of the party had the crap beat out of them repeatedly and multiply. I thought they were doing all right, you know. Uh, we, we were. We were. We did okay mm -hmm. in that first fight. I mean, yeah. it would have gone a lot faster if you were there because, let's face it, Dewey's the one that does the damage. He really puts the hurt Really? On. I thought you guys did the damage. No, maybe. I mean, yeah, no, not compared to you. No, okay, yeah. fine. Yeah, and that's so why you min max everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they had that, and um, I had my moments with Alvin, uh, and then we proceeded to go exploring even further in the catacombs. We had found out that they were uh, in catacombs closer to the bay and actually underneath the bay itself, if we could potentially get down there. Uh, while going through, we found several other uh, tombs. Uh, Will Smith, um, who else was there? I don't remember. Oh, no, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. I remember the, there were really good epitaphs. There, there were that's some... worth watching just to see the epitaphs and all the uh, tombstones. I would say mm -hmm. Will Smith was the best epitaph. The other ones were just kind of here and there. Uh, uh, there was a guy who had a dead penny. I don't know if penny was a dog or an actual coin. I don't know. I don't know. But we took the time to dig it up and we found nothing. So that was great. Uh, the, the guy who was cut in half. Yeah, the broken octopus monster. Yeah, well, you had two octopus monsters because we fought one first, and then one, the bigger one, snuck up behind us and dropped right in the middle of the party. Yeah, yeah. I will be honest; I was not paying attention. I was writing more backstory. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Which, I mean, maybe we'll talk about later. I mean, I don't know. What, what should the topic be to you guys tonight? No, we'll surprise everyone later with that. Anyway, so we get through. I think we've lost quite a few spells in the meantime. And I know Dewey's out of rages. And we know oh, we have a lot more tunnels to go through. <laughs> no, we have basically frank i don't want to surprise them you know find out how many bad well, evil guys well, we have. where we did leave off we know we're near the end because we found this um it's got what some sort of a you know, our force field or something over it uh 
Yes. It goes down to another set of, to, to the tunnel that we need to get to. We so, have puzzles and big bad boss fights to go through. Yeah, and you're out of rages. I actually, I don't have a lot of spells left, although I believe um, Lucas has yes. pretty much all his left. Yeah. I don't know how many more shape changes he's got left, but I know he's got his spells. Oh, and I am um, well below half hit points, too. I forgot about that part. Oh, shoot, that's right. I think the first thing we're doing next time is resting. We yeah. need a we need a short rest. So at least we can get back hit points. Yeah. Um, although I'm trying to think if there's anything. I mean, that was pretty good recap, actually. Um, uh, yeah, like I said, I didn't cause any trouble, so it was a kind of a normal... <laughs> You were good. It was me and Lucas that weren't so good that, yes, we tried to hide it from him, but mostly because we knew poor Tui would have a real hard time dealing. <laughs> yeah, I will say, I've been thinking about this for months on end, just like, okay, if we find Alvin, is Dewey going to rage and start going after people recklessly, you know, what the party is going to do versus what Dewey's going to do? Is he going to sit there and cry? Is he going to leave the party and become the really big, bad, evil guy, which is honestly still on the table? Nah, I think actually the way you, I mean, it's your character and you play however, but I, I really like the way you played it this weekend. Mm-hmm. Was just, he was, yeah, he was in tears while the rest of us are off fighting. You know, and that was, I thought that was really, that was a cool moment. Um, so I am, oh, I did, I did check legitimately because I was curious of whether or not he was in there. I thought Frank was going to be more cruel and actually make you fight his undead remains. That's what I thought he was going to do. And I thought that would just absolutely destroy poor Dewey. And I was like, God, he's actually in there. So it was a bit of a relief. <laughs> So, uh, do you have anything else you want to say? Or, I mean, I'm excited about what's to come. So, uh, it's going to be a challenge, and he's pushing us to the, our limits. And I, I, as a player, I really dig that. So, sure, yeah. No, I'm like I said, I'm already thinking about uh, 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 trying to force more Dewey backstory into a short rest into the next episode, and how to be classy about it too. I always hate when the player. Uh, 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 roles role plays r-o-l-e during a big fight you know and everything like that and i was worried i was letting you guys down but at the same time i was like ah but dude he's not gonna do that yet nope i mm -hmm. think i think the rest six of the rounds was good right and then dewey came back <laughs> we were we were fine we were legitimately fine i mean i know my knees went down on the fight but i think you had joined it at that point so and to be fair, he always goes down. I was about to say. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I keep thinking I'm weaker. I should be the one that's dropping, but you know, more than him. Because Bird I would bones. figure my friggin' war my armor class by all right should be worse than his. But um but no, I that's why I brought a bard in with healing spells is in case in case he drops. So that was one of the reasons why I brought her in. All right, that's that. So Sunday campaign, Margo! Margo <laughs> campaign. All right. Caitlin, you were in that one, right? Tell us about it. <laughs> so it was called. It's They're messing with you, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> just ignore him. It's like, I'm pretty sure I wasn't. But you know, <laughs> no. I'm just mad as Kyle. And do I ever. Nobody ask? watches this. You can make this shit yeah, up no. anyway. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> it's. The cam it's the campaign of Franks. That's what it is. So David did watch it though. So Frank, David Frank, 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 pretty quickly and pretty succinctly if I can. Um, all right. As Carol told you, the Sunday uh, show is basically uh, it's a campaign of a uh, family of Franks. You've got big Frank, Frank senior, Frank junior, little Frank, and a couple of friends. Anyway, these guys have been playing together since even before murder hobo, they were on another show called geek spiel. Anyway, Sunday campaign to summon up, 
these guys find themselves, uh, you know, trekking towards uh, some, some ruins and uh, have to deal with things like uh, an NPC by the name of Phineas Latrec and his explosive diarrhea because <laughs> of the blue bananas that he kept, uh, yeah, kept eating or whatever. Like I said, this stuff is comedy gold. Frank just, our Frank, just, you know, it's just amazing some of the shit he comes up with. Anyway, literally. Um, oh. So, so anyway... The episode starts, they're being tracked by uh, some feral tabaxi and all that, you know, little cat and mouse game. Uh, also, round, uh, winds up, let's see, things are happening within the group, like a little madness is happening to one of the fellow uh, players, one of the Franks, and, or, or is it the friend? Anyway. Uh, he thinks that everybody in his party are like lycanthropes and he's got a silver dagger and he's always going around a little bit stabby, stabby on all of them just to check them. See, folks, it's funny shit like that that Frank comes up with. Anyway, they end up uh, in the ruins. There's actually taverns in the ruins. They uh, explore both two taverns. They end up taking refuge in one tavern with um, an, a known proprietor there. Uh, copious be bitters tries to pedal his swill off to him that goes very poorly uh and it ends uh pretty much right around there there's beasts outside the tavern that are feasting on the dead bodies of the encounter that happened before they went in the ruins Hi. As Hello. <laughs> so anyway, folks, that pretty much wraps up the episode. Uh, if you get a chance, you want to follow, follow our shows and all that. Sunday is definitely a great one to catch too. It's it's a lot of fun, and um, Frank does a great job. He's phenomenal. So that's oh my it. God, so cute. <laughs> I think he's muted again, though. Where? Yeah. Yes, I'm muted. We're trying to be family friendly, friendly tonight. Oh, somebody's bringing food. Hi. 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 Do we need to be more fam? All right, no, he doesn't have the headphones on, so hopefully. No. Yeah, so we can yes. curse all we curse. want now. <laughs> Do you I don't want to drop pictures? <laughs> I was totally oh, going to do the, the J song yeah. from Clark's. <laughs> drop pictures. The show's going to be by children. That's, oh my gosh, that is too adorable. Should we actually go on to the next topic? Oh yeah, go for it. That's you, girl. Or is he going to be the topic? I just see him going into school and being like, I draw on the walls? <laughs> I assume that's a white Yes, board. we've been through that one already. <laughs> They're living that one right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I will leave him to drawing there uh, and we'll get to the uh, main topic for the night. And tonight is, is backstories. Uh, you, you said you had your, the shirt, man, that said baby's got backstories from that other. I said, know. it's not just a meme on the t-shirt that it's an actual thing. Baby's got backstories. Cause I, oh, backstories. Boy, do we I need to get that t-shirt. So, but that's promoting another show and we're not totally not doing that here. Nope. So. Nope. Screw them. Right. <laughs> No, I mean, them so, we don't need to give them any more publicity than they've <laughs> already earned so <laughs> they're cool peeps they deserve they, they are des they, they, are. Good, they, they deserve got. what they got so um so tonight's topic are backstories um so is or are what's that i said is, is backstories or are backstories oh well, I think because it's a single topic is is the correct okay. uh, yeah. grammatical grammar Nazi. Now, if we're talking about uh, you know everybody's here, that would be R. So, um, so the first thing, so you know, I'm just gonna go around the horn and we'll see uh, what's your general thoughts on backstories. Um, how much do you like it, and how? How in depth do you like to get into them? So I'm going to start. I'll start with you, David. David? <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. You freaking freak. Don't you freaking make it look like <laughs> Sorry, I'm just giving Carol grief. 
Backstories. I love backstories, folks. I mean, people create characters to min max and stuff. I create characters just for the fun of it. I mean, uh, details. I mean, in my eyes, there can't be enough details when it comes to crafting a backstory. But the thing is, it's just like um, how much detail is needed depends on your DM. I mean, your DM, if they're building a campaign, they um, if they're building a campaign, they're going to ask, you know, for a backstory for your characters. And you can be as brief or as long as you want. I think Kyle, for example, Dewey, he submitted like a 10 page backstory <laughs> from what I understand. So but, um, you know, that's that's one of the things that's that's great about D&D is that uh, you have a chance to express yourself with storytelling. I mean, you don't have to be the DM to tell a story. I mean, when you create your character, you actually have the opportunity to write your own story. And, uh, and it's up to the DM whether or not they want to incorporate that in the game. And about 90% of the time, the DM does. I mean, because that's where the DM can get ideas for adventure hooks, uh, things like that. Even if they're using a source book, you know, say like Curse of Strahd or Tomb of Annihilation, they can work your backstory into it somehow. So uh, backstories, I mean, while they, you know, may seem superfluous, they're they're, you know, they can be important too. And uh, it's, it's something that every player should uh, try to, exp you know, try to exercise a little bit in, uh, yeah. you know, Wizards of the Coast with their modules, uh, their source books and stuff like that, they give you tools and I'll actually go into that a little later. I don't want to dominate the thing because I could go on for hours about this, but the tools are there, they're in the books and stuff like that. Even if you can't make decisions on your own, there's tables with suggestions and things like that. You can leave it to a dice roll to determine the path that, of your character's backstory. Uh, uh, 5e is very great about that. That's one of the things I love about 5e. So you know, anyway. Shit, if I had thought about it sooner, I would have like, we could have all rolled up characters. Maybe we could do that next time. Hey, I mean, Roll up characters by they haven't kicked us off the air yet, so yeah, <laughs> that might be kind of well, fun. Write it down, uh, Carol, on the between the roles thing, so someone else has an idea. So, uh, all but right. like I said, I mean, yeah, details are great, so more the better. <laughs> uh, here, I'm gonna put a note, for, uh, I'm putting a note for myself so I remember that. Um, <laughs> Caitlin, how about you? What is your what are your thoughts on backstories in D and D? Hers are always colorful, even yeah. on the one shots. <laughs> so her thoughts in general. Uh, creating a backstory definitely allows the players to feel more involved with the story, regardless even if the DM uses it or not. It kind of creates a connection. I feel like for you personally. So it's really up to like a player's choice if you do or don't want to do one. But just like anything, everything has a backstory. You yourself do. You getting in the one shot does. Like that's life. So in essence, I feel like at some point your character's backstory comes up because as you're developing them, what are you even reflecting on to create the person you're creating? So to the amount of how much details you go in, it could be what you said, like 12 pages, or it could just be a few short sentences, but it helps at least you as a player and the DM to get a better sense of kind of like who you are, how you're going to play, input in, in a certain situation, like my characters that seem to like to uh, burn the villagers down, <laughs> <laughs> like that. Murder the four villagers. It's yeah. not even, yeah, and it's like, is that a chaotic evil, chaotic neutral? But like having a backstory to understanding why gives your character the personality they'll have that you'll play throughout the game. You know, you bring up, that's actually such a great point. And I mean, one of the things he, you know, that he put down on the list is backstories in terms of campaigns. And, and while, yeah, I think they're more important for campaigns. I actually don't think they're bad if you're just playing this character in a bunch of one shots to at least have an idea of where they might have come from. 
because you're right at times that that you know where they came from can influence your decisions that you're doing at the table right at that moment even if it's only a one shot and that's a great point kyle no more baby aggro <laughs> or child aggro is watching mickey somewhere stole right. my phone <laughs> all right so, so it's uh, either mickey or porn i don't know what he's watching <laughs> that's why i get the big screen this is your topic so what are your thoughts on uh and how in depth do you like to go in your backstories? Uh, at least ten pages uh, <laughs> per character. One shots uh, get twenty pages. Good <laughs> lord, I don't buy that. But how many? Pages? Um, no, typically I try and keep um, everyone gets a backstory, but most of them are all open ended, so I can can change and alter them as things happen. Um. Other than that, um, I don't know. The only characters I don't write a backstory for are purely technical characters, and they often don't prove quite as fun to play, uh, in my opinion, as a well backstoried character like um, uh, the Dew Clan or, uh, gosh, I'm trying to think of the rich, snobby barbarian. Oh, Chad Dunwagon. <laughs> Chad Dunwagon. Of That's the my East favorite character you've Dunwagons. created, dude. <laughs> right? And it's all backstory, you know? <laughs> so, oh, yeah. so, so, Kyle. Yes. So you write backstories even for your one-shot characters that appear on here? Sure. Um, I enjoyed the creative outlet. Um, and then also if I decide to use characters... Um, for uh, uh, one shots, then I actually still have an idea of what their background is. Um, I think uh, Zook Van Gelder, who <laughs> is my uh, uh, magic uh, businessman, CEO, paranoid, uh, keeps jars of toenail clippings preserved in his oh. own urine. Um, he's an odd fellow, uh, but he has a backstory. You're a bit of an odd fish. Bit of an odd, odd. Why would you say that, Carol? That's a weird thing to say. <laughs> I, I would say he's more of a strange cod. Yeah. Hey. How many pages was Dewey's backstory? How many actual pages was Dewey's yeah. backstory? Yeah. Uh, it was written as an email, but I think if I had written it up, it probably would have been two pages on Word. Oh, okay, that's not too bad. That's no, not no, that's not too bad. Um, what I try for backstory is to um, where they're from, um, important characters in their life. Um, I have done the Edge Lord orphan deal, but at the same time, you know what? Unmute yourself if you're going to give looks like that. Gosh, uh, Handy, you. you are your mute. Okay, bye. No, uh, I'm not being it. <laughs> no, uh, uh, Xanathar's Guide. Um, actually, I did Xanathar's Guide for a character. Absolutely love that, uh, rolling up the random character. Um, no, but I put where he was from, places, uh, <laughs> the people who were interested in him, and one other thing, but I don't remember. Uh, but I always like to make sure if it's for a campaign that there are knives in it for the DM to use. Yep. There are lots yep. of them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Two, yeah, honestly. Yeah, no, I agree on that front. Um, in terms of my views on length, um, it shouldn't be super long or super detailed because then the DM could get bogged down in that level of information. I think just keep it to, you know, yes, create knives, create something that the DM can throw back at you uh, to, to, you know, make it, because if you give them like a story with nothing to throw at you, then likely it's not good, not much is going to be incorporated or you're going to make them work really hard to try to figure out how to, you know, twist that backstory around, you know, to, 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 to really fuck with you. Uh, although I've had that happen. I, uh, once I wrote a backstory, and I mean, it was one that had plenty of daggers in it, it was, and then the DM took it and put it on its head and completely twisted it. And it was fantastic uh, the way he did. I like surprises. So, 
Um, but I don't feel like, I mean, I think Taryn's tacked backstory once, but I kept moving. I kept, you know, I play in a campaign till, you know, and then I would go on and I play in a different campaign, but at, at higher level. So my, I think her backstory at one point was about seven pages long with all the stuff from happened in the other campaigns, but that's not starting from the beginning either. So most of the time, yeah, I'm probably about the same thing. Yeah, even like actually Terrence backstory I sent to Frank was only about two paragraphs long. And I think the biggest thing is you do need to leave some holes there. You need to leave some, some mystery that the DM has, uh, that can the DM can use to put his own characters and his own plot uh, to tie it better into uh, what's going on in the campaign. I feel like you do need to leave a few gaps here and there too. So, um, you know, I'm gonna go, I, I'm gonna actually do like that, that sort of thing. So, um, Caitlin, I'll go with Caitlin. Uh, what do you like to put in your backstories? What are the important points to you that go in there? Enos jokes. <laughs> no. So I'm probably one of the worst actually when it comes to backstories. I tend to write it typically as a campaign goes on. So I'll have like a general sense. This is goes into <laughs> all the writing. Let's go back to college. It's always drafts, never actually the essay. But things I think that are important is a lot of it. You're working with a group. How did me and the group get together is important to me. And then a lot of the times, how am I paying? Why am I playing the class that I am? So because I love tieflings, I've done a cleric in another game and it was kind of like a, oh, grew up in terrible place, family's awful, blah, 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 became a cleric because I want to do better and better. So like even in that context, it like helps you when developing your own character of like, I'm going to do this path, I'm going to pick this class, I'm going to do this like, uh segment of it like how you determine even your character itself if that makes sense and then family too did you have family did you not have family is your family are they dead down? your yeah, family dead why are they dead <laughs> your family can be we'll get into tropes in a moment <laughs> yeah. i can attest your family absolutely can be one of those daggers too mm-hmm yeah. Well, I would, I would say if you're writing a backstory and you give it to your DM and your DM has a habit of using backstories, you may want to say, hey, I put a little star on places. I really don't want you to mess with this. You know, uh, personally for me, if I wrote a backstory and I'm thinking of a new character already where it's like, OK, well, he has a wife and a child and that's why he goes out adventuring because evil forces are on the rise and they started at this small town but if he doesn't stop the bigger evil out there then they're going to come and take over the small town anyway and it's at that point you're like you know what i honestly can't have you really do anything awful to them and i would appreciate it if you don't but here's a few extra knives to stick in my back later on just leave those two out of it it doesn't even think, have to be negative. They could be positives. We keep saying, yeah. nice, but your DM could be like, here's a reward. Here's this. You met this. Or I don't know, we're giving you this special ability. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, a knife can be stuck in your back or it can be used to serve you a meal at Thanksgiving. <laughs> God. No. Not wrong. It carves the turkey, right? Exactly. The roast beast serves it right up. <laughs> all right david how about you what do you like to put in to your backstories what specific things well one of the things <laughs> obviously plot holes <laughs> me and my dm who happens to be my girlfriend <laughs> had a big discussion about it before the show uh i thought i had wrote this solid backstory and uh, <laughs> one of the things that happened is she's the dm and you know, it was like she just took it and said, no, that's not going to happen. Uh, I created a backstory, uh, a character. I mean, tragedy happened. Yeah, it was a trope. It was family. He's technically an orph orphan, but he was adopted, raised in nobility, all that stuff. 
point being was one of the things that I wrote in, I wrote in about the event that happened that to about what happened to his parents. It was, it, it was pretty traumatic um, for him and how he survived the event. And um, what I wrote is I wrote about the, the, the villain was like the B, the BBG. She was, uh, she was a catalyst. She was somebody from my character's parents' past that came back and exacted her revenge. So <laughs> uh, my DM decided to change all that, that the person that I thought, you know, that I wrote to be the bad person actually isn't. She turns out to be a, a victim of somebody else and that there's an even worse bbg out there you know it was just like oh you were going the dickens route and saw that character no i'm gonna change that so you know like i said it's just you know when you create a backstory one of the things that you're gonna have to do uh is you're gonna have to as a player, you're going to have to keep an open mind about it because your DM may change things. They may change some of the details uh, to work it into their narrative or to write their own narrative on it. And as a player, you got to you gotta be willing to let that go too. So, but I mean, you know, when you, when I create a character, you know, I write a story first and that's what it happened. It might've been one night when I was manic and I'm just sitting here writing and, um, you know, I, I wrote a very detailed story, but I had a deadline I had to get it uh, to my DM for. So I rewrote it, left, uh, you know, was real brief about it, you know, got it down concise, but apparently I had left these huge plot holes. And that's when Carol brought that up. I was just like, oh, plot holes. Let me tell you about plot holes. But but do you think now, did she bring it up to you as a negative? No, no. I, I had There's no idea it was going to happen. I just wrote this story and it was out there. This is how an inexperienced player I was. You know, it's just, okay, I had these all these tools out there. And uh, <laughs> uh, I had all these tools, you know, from Dungeons and Dragons that I was just finding out, you know, all these tables and things like that. So... <laughs> Jesus. Uh, you should see the chat. It's just yeah. awful. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, you know, and I thought I was doing a great job with it. And, um, you know, and I, God damn it, that chat threw me off. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> what I, um, what was the question again, Carol? <laughs> What do you like to include? What do you think needs to be? Or what do you like to put in your backstories? What are the important points? Important points. Important points that are like uh, origin stories. And D and D gives you a whole table that you can use to do this. So I'm not shamelessly plugging D and D. I'm not sponsored by them. But anyway, uh, one of the things that's innate to creating a character is you know traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws. And those are the things that I, I definitely like to include in it. Now, Xanathar's Guide to Everything goes a step further. And they have a section in their book called This Is Your Life. Oh, and This yeah. Is Your Life, I mean, gives you a selection for origins. Uh, they give you personal decisions, you know, and all these are on a table and you roll a D100 for it. And, you know, so these are just tools that you can use. But the point that I'm trying to make is you can take these things to kind of fuel your backstory, get the creative uh, process going, and it may help you write your backstory. Um, they're coming out with a, even uh, another supplement soon in November called Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. And <laughs> you can actually change like aspects about your character's race and things like that. I mean, they're, they're, they're taking you know, the, the D and D canon and kind of like turning it on its ear. And those are going to be elements that you can work into your backstory too. Like if you want to play an orc, that's fine. You don't want to be an evil orc. So they're, they're going to give you the tools to incorporate that into 
Don't get me started on evil races. No, this is D and D. We're playing heroes. This is a we are D&D. characters who stand out. And oh, you no. cut out. <laughs> wow, is perfectly fine. You got worse. Yeah. <laughs> Frank's got to be doing that, slowing down his bandwidth. <laughs> God, that was so perfect. <laughs> I'm glad we're all happy. You're fine, Kyle. Now. No, I totally, I Frank, totally know what back you mean. Stupid backstories and bullshit. Garbage. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a hot button topic in the D and D community. But it's not a hot button topic. It's a, just a topic that people won't shut up about. Exactly. It's D and D. If you want orcs to be good, be good. If they want them to be evil, oh, if you're playing in Forgotten Realms, orcs are evil, and so are the Drow, except for the ones who follow the other goddess, who is a lot nicer and everything like that. Your characters are exceptional. They don't have to follow the freaking rules the little ones right there so i had to change my language real fast i i said it last week folks D D. what's your story and oh, that's a tagline i'm sticking to it you write whatever the hell you want <laughs> it's it's in the form of what the knows? game it is it's tabletop white role playing so like it should be created a creative outlet for you i Absolutely. mean what yeah I said absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I'm gonna put. Just had to talk over to you to agree with you. Yeah, (laughs) I'm gonna bring up another subject of why uh, storytelling is so good and it's integral. Um, Basically, I'm, you know, even though I started when D and D started playing, I had taken so much time off and didn't come back until five e. So one of the things that happened was I started playing in a game with friends and next thing you know i got thrown into a game with uh kids because more and more kids started wanted to join our group so we did and um we had some issues with our dm not being able to make it all the time so suddenly boom dave's the dm i'm like holy crap so so every week I had to come up with a new story for these kids to play because, I mean, I had no idea how to build a campaign. So I was just writing stories every week. My kids freaking loved it. But the point I'm trying to make is I gave license to the kids to create their own characters. And kids, I mean, if you ever ask a kid to tell a story, Mm -hmm. it is freaking amazing (laughs) because some of the things they come up and this is off the top of their head it's just like yeah my character is a drow she's uh her name's night whisper uh she's you know and it's just amazing it's just like damn okay taking notes put it putting that in and working it into a story you know so but the point i'm trying to make is is that storytelling is integral and um I mean, not only to the game, but for yourself as a player to grow as a player. And I bring up the kids because, I mean, I mean, this just, you know, th- this is this is free license for their imagination. So, and that that's why backstory is important. You know, it makes them feel connected to the game. It'll make you as a player feel connected to the game. Uh, in the campaign that I'm in right now, I literally get... Fr- stressed out when certain things happen to my character i see it with these guys in the campaign too i mean carol and and dewey i mean yeah they're playing it out but i can see where you know they've got legitimate concerns so well it's i mean obviously it's a game so it only i'm not really concerned concerned but it's no but that stuff and that stuff happens when one of those daggers comes out it's it's so much more exciting um it it's just i i like as i said it's really weird i like to get an adrenaline rush sitting at a table and that's one of the re that's one of the reasons how i can get an adrenaline rush sitting at a table um you know so that's also why i said earlier too i think this is part of it i also like and this is not a backstory thing but the fact that i feel like in the campaign we are being pushed to our limits through this thing. We're going to be pretty much tapped out by the time we get to the end. And some of us are already partially tapped out, right, Kyle? (laughs) No, no, perfectly fine. (laughs) No rage. Um, Whoa, whoa, lie barbarian. You forgot about the lie bar part. I'm going to be solving the riddles now. 
That's good. That's good. I could probably solve the riddles too. Well, but, you're really but, gonna you're really looks, gonna like the next book because there's a whole section on puzzles, man. Oh, there so, is. I didn't read I that. Thought, yet. <clears throat> I do want to bring up something on uh, what you said about uh, it's Xanathar's Guide to Everything, right? That's got the section. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it is an option, and we did it for our Tuesday night, well, our suspended Tuesday night campaign, because that is not going to happen until people are comfortable meeting in person, due to the fact that he's, our GM has so much friggin', you know, dwarven forage that we want to use it, and we don't want to do it by camera. So, needless to say, though, the, every character in that campaign was written up, our, all our backstories were written up based on die rolls on in that chapter of the book. And it worked out really well. And we had a session zero, uh, everybody had their own session zero to get into the game and uh, and the, your backstory was featured in it. And he, it's a, a lot of the backstories have come up, but mine really hasn't yet. Um, I'm trying to think of what other questions. Oh, I know what I was gonna ask. I kind of thrown the playbook aside because I feel like there's there's a, so many different angles to tackle backstories, and uh, I'm a little confused by a couple of his questions there. So I'm gonna just say my own. Do you Ow. guys what? Oh, I had a question. What? All right, fine. Well, I, I well, I'll, you have been like a 30 year DM player, or Dungeon Dragon yeah. player, or Pathfinder player. Yeah. Uh, uh, and maybe some of you other guys can uh, uh, relate. How about secret backstories? What are your guys' opinions on those? Or do you think uh, backstories should be kind of shared up all at front? That way the other players can feel the same amount of tension that you do when you encounter some of your backstory. So the secret backstory would be, say, uh, um, um, you are a... Oh, what's the agent uh, who has been brainwashed or everything like that? You're a sleeper. Oh, you're, you're a about sleeper agent. agent like that. And so you act all normal, but you have this secret hidden backstory that eventually the DM will release and you'll be like, ah, ha, ha, ha. So, is it fun to have those? Do you guys enjoy that? Or uh, are just having a completely open backstory to say the right players that way they can enjoy the stuff that happens to you just as much as you do. Question of your question. Do you mean having a back your a backstory that only the GM knows? Like you you like you have amnesia or whatever, and the and the GM knows why you had amnesia and that that sort of secret? Or like, you know, you write up a backstory and it comes out over the game, but you don't tell anybody in advance. Which way do you mean? Well, I suppose your secret backstory could go two ways. The one where it's just you and the DM, who knows? Yeah. Or you could also go with the secret backstory where you're intentionally hiding it from other players because your backstory makes you a far more nefarious person than they would actually travel with. Mm, I don't, well, see, I, I like, personally, I like having the backstory i like not knowing everything about the other characters i like having that come out over the course of the game and the surprises and the you know the daggers i i i i enjoy actually keeping it a secret and having it come out over the course of the game i I am just as surprised and and as the player you know the person who it is or if it's me you know i said i haven't told you you guys you guys know part in my backstory, Taryn's backstory, but you Evil don't know. Twin. Yeah, that's that actually was not the original backstory. Keep in mind, there is another part to the backstory that's just a lot bigger. Why she left uh, Fulton, which you know a little of. So, so let me pass that on to the you. other players then, yeah. real fast. Caitlin, since you want to say a whole bunch of stuff, but you're busy typing in cast, you're saying muted. snide comments. What's yeah. your opinion? You seem like someone who liked to share a backstory immediately. <laughs> no, I think if you have a secret backstory, regardless, the DM needs to know. <laughs> right, right. How else are you going to play that into the game? One shot. 
or a long Caitlin, time. Caitlin, you have to listen to the question. Obviously, the DM knows about your secret. Well, backstory. no, because then Carol is saying, I don't know what was going on. But yeah. No, I, otherwise, it's just it's, murder yeah, hobo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, yeah, the exactly. But no, it's, it's nice, especially because you, everyone, the other person watching us right now through this. Uh, oh, that's just Frank. Thing. Feel free to say hi, Frank. Uh, you're a turd in the butthole. How dare like, you do that to Alvin? Duh. Life <laughs> and backstory. That's like real life too. So why wouldn't that play into a game? Mm -hmm. There's always things to be unfolded. Like that could be part of the storyline too, being worked into it. That's that. There's always things you're learning more about, whether it's your other players, the NPCs, the setting you're in. Sure, but you know, when you first get started with the D&D &D group, no one knows anyone's backstory. Yeah. You think maybe sharing uh, it metagame wise, out of character? No, not at all. Not yeah. even like a portion to get the other people interested in your character. No, nope. that's literally nope. real life. <laughs> nope. nope, you learn about me as you learn about me. Yeah, that's <laughs> why we don't like you, Carol. How about you, David? Um, well, I would think that a secret backstory needs to be shared with your DM, or like I said, it's just murder hoboing. Again, <laughs> what? Were you not listening to the question either? No, I was listening to the question. No, uh, <laughs> no, but as a player, I mean, you can leave little, little breadcrumbs as to, you know, this other backstory unfolding, I guess. Is that the point you were trying to make, Kyle? Huh? Yeah. Uh, sure. sure. He wasn't but hey, let's use attention. this as a segue. <laughs> of course, I don't pay attention. I ask questions, wait for you guys to be done, or I pick on a little tidbit that I can use as a segue. For example, you were saying about leaving little bits of your backstory. How do you incorporate your character's backstory into a campaign? Say your DM is just letting you guys role play as you do. Mm -hmm. How do you push it in there? Well, very gently. Yes, <laughs> gently, no. You just go in there like haka a loogie and go. Um. <laughs> anyway, the, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, obviously through role play. I mean, you know, but you know, um, you know, it's up up to you how you role play it out you know sure. whether you're going to leave a clue for let's the others. let's say for new players out there who may watch this later or maybe some people who are watching on the screen thinking people say butthole instead of plot hole uh i'm not calling anyone out i don't oh, know why you know. anyone would ever think that uh uh but maybe as an explanation to new players how how much of your backstory how do you put it out there um, do you just blabber mouth like a, a clown car for bullshit and you just pour your backstory out? That's 90% of a player, Kyle. I mean, yeah, you know, that's, it's that's like what, a clown, clown car. It just comes out. You know, uh, it, it all varies on who you're playing with and the campaign. I don't yeah. think there's a black and white answer to that. It's no. so great. No. no. Then give it, me it some sort of on, answer. It, it depends on what your group is comfortable with. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, for a new player to come out, like I said, you know, I mean, with working with kids, I mean, it just comes out, you know. I'm sure. You know, yeah. I mean, a kid will turn around and say, and my character does this, you know, and you're as a DM, you're like, okay, <laughs> you know. So, um, you know, and everybody else is sitting at the table like, what the hell? Um, no, I mean, I, you know, not everything has to be spelled out in the session zero, you know, and not, you know, your DM can just have a hint of, you know, of what your character's motivations are, you know, but, you know, as a player that that's up to you, you got license. If you want to change the motive of your character, then that's the, okay. that's the ilk so of a, let me, let me give you guys an example. Then that uh, we've will help. got, let's say we have this like bird person who's played by a very high Canadian, oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, 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 this druid who's like a, a edge Lord, but with wolves, uh, 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 Carol and, and 
your barbarian just watched their father figure die. How do you introduce more backstory into that situation? Oh, you I mean, it's this is not me. I don't know if it sounds familiar with you guys. I mean, there's I lots of know. players that have barbarians and bards and Aarakocra clerics and such. I don't know. You. It depends on the you player. You kill their father figure, Kyle. So I don't know. It depends on the player and the car- the players. You, there's no answer for that. There's no one answer for that. Well, it depends you... on. It depends on who's sitting at that table and how those players want to handle it. Yeah. How you know what? Or? That is a great answer. You interjected. I think one of the things is you interjected quite a bit there, and I thought that was fantastic. I also thought. Uh, it's a, on Saturday, I'm trying to get a little more talky talky so that people can interject a little more than I think I'd like to see more. I think back. a good example of that is Kyle's grieving with, with his character, yeah, doing sure. setting out for six rounds, you know, because he's grieving. <laughs> there great. you go, Kyle. Yeah, that's a good example right then and there. Well, I wasn't talking about me, guys. No, clearly, no. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, all right, it is like nine o'clock, and because I'm technically running this show and not Kyle, I don't necessarily want to go over, so you know, That's we could right. talk this all night. I mean, I have like another question I was gonna ask you guys, but it is pretty much time, so oh, go ahead, hit it real fast, and we'll do it with the last I don't our final that. thoughts. Go, go, all right, all right, I'll tell you what, we'll make this as a part of your final part. Final okay. thoughts. What is, do you find you have a style of backstory you do? Like there's something that you cling on to a lot that, that appears in your character's backstories a lot. Like in my case, my characters are unwilling adventurers. That means that something has happened to them where they end up on that road. So I have one character that had an abusive boyfriend that almost killed her and she had run away from home from to, to go see him to go be with them. And her parents said, well, if you go with them, saw it off. So she's stuck on the road, you know, then there's Taryn who I'm not totally going to get into here, uh, who she definitely has a reason to be on the road. Um, that's, that's sort of the thing I like. I don't necessarily go, the whole thing about orphans was mentioned, you know, how do you necessarily stay away that your that your, your character, there's a joke out there that every adventure is an orphan which is not true hey you know what there's the greatest uh edge edge lord story uh about (laughs) these two brothers who grew up in an orphanage uh and they would get together with their group and sing songs uh uh, and raise money for the orphanage so that they could save it uh and you know that's when an edge lord story is real nice he just All summed right. up Blues Brothers. <laughs> I know it did. So, Kyle, what am I <laughs> the orphanage. <laughs> Is there any particular style you find or uh, thing you tend to cling to, or do you just whatever you feel like at the moment? Uh, um, most of my backstories, um, uh, as a person, I enjoy the duality of man. So, a lot of my backstories will have a kind of Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, uh, 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 madness thrown into there where, yeah, maybe there is a bit of amnesia and he's a delusional Don Quixote type character. Um, And that actually makes things a lot more difficult because then you have to write twice as much. All right. Any other final thought, by the way? Uh, Yes. Final thoughts. If you guys really want to know an example of how to put your backstory out there, you should tune in two weeks from now on a Saturday. See how Dewey Dockamel handles releasing more of his backstory. That'd be great. I can't wait. Almost plug right there, folks. (laughs) (laughs) Because I'm shameless. When it comes to D&D, I interrupt Carol constantly. Kyle, shut the fuck up. Uh, by the way, if it didn't say, hey, why not now? Mature audience is only, right? So, uh, Caitlin, I almost called you Daphne because that's the name you have up right now. Uh, Caitlin, how about you? Uh, a final, uh, is there anything you like to deal with? And a final thought. To deal with? Like, all right, is there anything? What like, do you interject like, into your character you backgrounds? Put your backstories in terms of like, a, is there a common theme or something? Like, so in my case, 
you know, in his case, it's the duality man. In my case, it's it's uh, people that get set on the path of adventuring that don't necessarily want to be there. How about you? Is there anything you tend to like to cling to or is it just whatever you feel like at the moment? Lately, it's been uh, some type of weird psychological trauma. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for copying me. Just manifests in the game for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I'm just getting scared. But no, I think the biggest thing for any character I play, it's always having a more like neutral stance on my background like I'll never be at the point where I'm like no I can't do this because if you I get it some people like the play so black and white and see how they wrote out their characters <laughs> but if it's going to interrupt the party and what we're doing and adventuring at least for me as another player at the table I sit there like you don't need to steal all the things from the store and then I played a paladin as my first character and sometimes people play it so lawful good that they're like, well, I'm going to get the guards involved and have my player in the party arrested. It's just stuff like that where it's... It sounds like you really need to listen to Scott's views on paladins on that <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, all right. Do you have any uh, anything else in a final thought? And I got a new tattoo, which uh, I think I have to like raise myself up. It's to show baby it. Yoda, but it's baby Cthulhu Yoda what? with a you cowboy hat. Here. Oh, okay. uh, Oh, it's adorable. You know what? Is there someone who makes, you know, the giant sized teddy bears? I'm looking for someone who makes a giant sized owl bear for the awesome. itty bitty one. Oh, yeah. He loves owl bears. Who oh. doesn't? <laughs> so if you know, text Frank. Frank will get pissed at me and tell me about it. And then I'll buy that from you. Hey, build a bear if you're listening. There you go. Yeah, baby. Oh, my God. They need a D. All the cute characters. Sorry, David. How about um, you? Uh, any common threads through your backstories and final thought? Well, I mean, my backstory is because of my DM constantly evolving. Evolving, I it's involving too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a totally immersive ca campaign. I mean, we're in Waterdeep. We're interacting with oh, NPCs. Yeah. David write backstories for different characters do you have a common theme yes i do what is it orphans they're all orphans. you are you do the D, &D orphan <laughs> you are the cliche i love it no really? no serious seriously i do try to put thoughts in it uh one of the things that that i try to go with is i don't know it's a trope but come on i mean tragedy builds character there's got to be a freaking tragedy in there somehow so that's my final thought. <laughs> hey, that's, and that's fair. That's fair. It's, it's absolutely fair. I mean, said my unwitting characters, a lot of times it is tragedy that will send them on the road. Um, all right. So I want to thank you guys. That was a very interesting, interesting, interesting hour and seven minutes or so. Uh, <laughs> just to remind you all, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. Uh, check out our YouTube archives because, of course, that's where all the old episodes are. Uh, buy our crap, as Frank likes to say, but it's not crap. It's good on our store. And of course, if you want to visit us and you want to chat about D&D or whatever, we have a Discord. Um, we'd like to, of course, thank our sponsors, uh, Fish Games with Adventure Sense and Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, of course, if you want a seat at either this table, this, this round table discussion group. That's the or penis right there. Or you want He's a little boy, it. so his balls never dropped. So he doesn't know what those are supposed to be. You know, we Told wonder you. why Kyle's episodes take forever. I think we see why. You know, the, the ability to... I don't know. You decided to ask a last question. I said, Carol, don't do that. Just end the show. I said, no, you didn't. Uh, so... So anyways, I've got a pretty good memory. It's folks. out there for posterity now, folks. So, <laughs> uh, Posterior? <you> right. <laughs> we could end this, you know, if you'd finish up on just let me finish saying you want to see it at either this table or at one of our games. Uh, if there's an opening on Thursday for our soap opera or on Saturday nights for the one shots. Uh, just hit uh, hit up Frank on, you can either DM him on our uh, Twitter account 
which is at Murder Hobo Inc. or M Hobo Inc. Sorry. And then there's, or you can email them at mhoboink at gmail.com. Uh, thank you all for Next watching. Next time about the giant owlbears. Have a lovely night, everybody. And everybody wave, you know, do your silly waves. With the